Good afternoon. This past Thursday, as you may know, I was to have a meeting with the Pastoral Council and Finance Council members uh, to begin our study of the joy of the gospel uh, that was written by Pope Francis in 2013. And as you know, Mother Nature had other plans for us, so they gave us the evening off uh, other than to reschedule it for a later time. But that document of the joy of the gospel, I began to read that probably shortly after it was published, but never got an opportunity quite to finish it. And so having the study with the Pastoral Council and Finance Council does give me an opportunity to do that. I think I mentioned when I met with Bishop Bonner some weeks ago, uh, he had mentioned that book to me, and I knew he had referenced it quite often in his own talks, as well as his um, articles in The Exponent. And as we talked, I began to think, this may be something good for us to read as a pastoral council, finance council combined together uh, for two reasons. Uh, first, the book seems to be the playbook for Bishop Bonar. Uh, he often, as I said, makes reference to it. And I thought if you want to have an idea where the bishop is going with us as a diocese, as well as Pope Francis, for us as a church, this book may be a good one to read, to study, and to pray over. And secondly, as you know, again, the councils have spent almost 10 years in talking about saving our churches and very little about ministry and mission of the gospel. The joy of the gospel very much is about mission and ministry as regards evangelization to which we are all called. In fact, I really recommend all of us as a parish to read the, this document along with our councils. We will be spending five sessions on the book for the five chapters, and I will share some of that discussion with you after each of the sessions. But again, you may want to read the, uh, the document, the book itself, uh, as the council goes through it. In this weekend's scripture readings, we hear about mission. First, we hear about the selection of Isaiah to be sent as a prophet among his own people. But Isaiah sees himself very much unworthy to do so. He recognizes himself as a man with unclean lips living among a people of unclean lips. And yet, a seraph, one of God's angels around his throne, uh, touches Isaiah's lips with an ember to remove, symbolically removing that, that wickedness. And when the Lord, in his voice, asks, whom shall I send in that passage, Isaiah responds, here I am, send me. In the gospel that we will hear this weekend, we hear about how Jesus told Peter and his companions to put out into the deep waters once again after they had been fishing all night and caught nothing but they simply follow his command to do so, and they caught a great number of fish with their nets almost tearing. Peter approaches Jesus then and recognizes his own unworthiness, his sinfulness. But what does Jesus say to him? Do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. Peter and his companions leave their boats, their means of a living, and begin to follow Jesus. They become not just disciples of Jesus, as we so often think about them, but they truly become missionary disciples of Jesus. And that is what Pope Francis calls us to and calls our church to, to become not just disciples, but to become missionary disciples. Like Peter and his companions, Pope Francis reminds us that as Christians, we have had an encounter with a person and in an event in the person of Jesus Christ. He says in paragraph seven of Joy the Gospel, and I quote him here, being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon 
and a decisive direction, end quote. Stop and think for yourself where your encounter with Jesus Christ has been. Your encounter that moved you along in your own life, beginning at your baptism. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, also tells us about his encounter with Jesus and his own unworthiness. He describes himself as not being fit to be an apostle, that is one being sent. And he sees himself unfit for this because he persecuted the church of God. But he recognizes that by the grace of God, he has become a preacher and a missionary disciple. And God's grace has been most effective in him. Isaiah recognized his own unworthiness. Peter and his companions were simply fishermen, had minimal education other than what they knew about catching fish, fish and St. Paul even terrorized the church. Yet God called each one of them. All were open to God in their lives. Isaiah had a spiritual encounter with God. Peter, his companions, and Paul all had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Yes, they all recognized their unworthiness, yet their encounters gave each of them a new horizon and a decisive direction. We all know our own unworthiness and our own inadequacies to become missionary disciples. But perhaps it is time for us as a parish and as individual members of Our Lady of Peace to acknowledge not only our unworthiness, but also our own encounters with Jesus Christ. To not be afraid and to recognize the new horizon and decisive direction to which we are called to go, as did Isaiah, Peter and his companions, and St. Paul. God bless all of you and have a wonderful week.